Hey guys, here we are for another video and in this one I'm going to show you why building stories in Tableau is so essential for your analytics career. So let's get into it. Hey guys, here we are for another video. Kind of want to give a quick shout out to all the people that signed up to my website, Jellyman Education, which I'll mention in a little bit. Just want to say thanks to everyone who supports all my content and all the videos that I make and, all, and the course. Thank you guys so much. You make all of this possible. So let's get into the video. I have here a built story that I actually just finished recording for the website and as you can see i've built a storyboard now some of the text is just you know kind of fillers but it gives you an idea of kind of the things you can do when it comes to stories and unfortunately most people don't even know stories exist all they really know are dashboards but there's another step after dashboards which is how do you piece your dashboards together to tell a story. And this is really important in your career. And one of the examples I kind of give is if you imagine you're a chef at a restaurant and you spend all this time sourcing ingredients, preparing the ingredients, preparing the dishes, and then finally when you serve it to your customer, it's really ugly, it's not plated correctly, the plate is dirty. So you wanna be able to tell a compelling story and not just do a data dump of information. So let me kind of give you some pointers on how to do your story. So let's go and uh, find the one that I have kind of built like this. So let me give you a few tips on how to actually construct it. So assuming that we have the dashboards already built like so. One of the first tips is if you've already created a story, you wanna set your dimensions from the get-go right and then you want to stick to it so in this case i've picked 1100 by 650 and it just fits kind of nicely on my uh, screen here so what i want to do is for each dashboard that i have before i start building to set it to fixed size and then fit it to the actual story you're going to be putting it in right so here i set it to fit to story one and if you go into every single dashboard it should be the same thing so fit to story one fit to story one. And the reason that's important is that when you start bringing in these stories by dragging them in, it fits perfectly. And you haven't got anything where you have to kind of scroll up and down that gets really, really annoying. So that trick of fitting to the story is absolutely key. So adding the dashboards to the story couldn't be simpler. We simply drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop and very quickly we've built an entire story right so that is the construction of a story and we can add some descriptions if we if we like but the other part of this video and again i don't want to go too deep in how story construction works because if you really want to learn that in depth i literally just filmed two hours of story um content for the course last night just two hours worth so it was a crazy amount um, and you can learn it in detail but let me give you a few tips whenever you want to tell a story right you got to think about think of it like a movie and when you're watching a movie you don't start it from the end you don't start it from the middle you don't just have characters talking that haven't really been introduced so you kind of want to bring the person along so they understand the context of what you're talking about so here we have just a simple example and the data is volcano data so the story starts with there are 1328 eruptions over the last 20 years great we're talking about volcanoes and eruptions in dashboard 2 we break that down a little bit all right so all those eruptions break down by these countries the top five of which are United States, Indonesia, Japan, Russia, and Chile, and they account for 42% of all the eruptions that we have in this particular data set. And you can have some information and facts in here. But as you can see, I'm not jumping too far ahead. I'm not overwhelming them with too many visualizations. I haven't got like six separate sheets in here. I just have one, right? And I have a very clear statement of, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Moving on to the next dashboard, we can say, well, let's go dig a little bit deeper into those, far, uh, into those five countries. Where are they? So we have a map showing exactly where they are. And in terms of their size of number of eruptions relative to the other ones. So this is a clever use of sets because we can isolate just those five countries and apply separate coloring to them. Then here we can have a, you know, a bit more of uh, explanation or some insight that we want to see. And then comparing the five of them because if you look at the circles 
it's hard to tell the sizing. Is this one bigger than this one? So instead of the person trying to figure it out, we've simply created a very simple bar chart. There's no grid lines, there's no axes, just simple numbers, right? So you wanna be very clear, no ambiguity, okay? So going into the next dashboard, again, we are, as you can see, we're going deeper and deeper into the information. We're not jumping to the conclusion. These five countries, exhibit high levels of andesite and basalt composites. So we're looking at the rock types now. And what we're finding in all of these countries, they have very high compositions of these particular composites or minerals or rocks, I'm not a geologist, compared to the other types. That is interesting. And what we wanna do is we wanna investigate this a little bit further. Going into dashboard five, okay? What we also wanna look at is, well, what about the actual volcano type? right what we find here is that in terms of the number of eruptions the largest group is the strata volcano that seems to be the biggest contributor when it comes to the eruption type okay so what if we piece the volcano type with the rock type what do we get then well that brings us to dashboard six and we do a, a comparison of rock type against volcano type and as you can see it's not overwhelming with data. There's not lots of borders. There's not numbers on every single thing. You're just telling one tiny piece of the story at a time. There's no need to rush. You have heaps of dashboards to show it. You can take them through. And trust me, by the end, if there's no um, misinterpretation or ambiguity, they'll thank you for it, right? And they'll probably call you again for um, another job. And that's kind of comes into the whole success as an analyst. You want to be able to tell a clear story so that you can solve their problem they can take action and then they can call you back and say do you want another job do you want another opportunity do you want another task you want another problem and then if you do that over and over and over again you do it with lots of stakeholders that's how you get the six figure salaries that's how you get better opportunities that's how you get really strong resumes and application um, documentation so you can move from job to job as you see fit chasing whatever dream you want to chase right so that's also built into my course on how do you actually succeed as an analyst so keep that in mind now taking this information we go well if stratovolcano and andesite composition is 43 percent right of all of the eruptions why don't we use this composition to predict what are the next countries that have this composition that we need to start preparing some sort of medical or some sort of um, evacuation plan let's have a look so now we have dashboard seven these five countries are the next on the list that have those composites and volcano type so as you can see in the story we've been able to break it down piece by piece at most i have two visualizations per dashboard right so that's not a fixed rule but you never want to give more than you need to and you don't want to give enough it's a delicate balance right so we will leave it there for this one but if you want to check out the site let me show you quickly so here on the expert course i literally just uploaded it as you can see this thing is exploding i think the other day i said it's 18 hours it's now 21 hours it's just getting bigger and bigger and a lot of people have uh requested you know i really want to be successful in my career can you teach me not just analytics, but also how it fits into the real world? And that's basically how the entire site was designed, was how do you actually take this tool um, and succeed? So learning how to manage your stakeholders, learning how to um, plan your solutions, learning how to iterate, all that is built into this course. So here we go, stories. All these were added just last night, and it goes through in detail how to build, deploy your entire story. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys again for watching. I'm going to be creating a whole list and a whole set of videos now that I'm kind of taking it easy with the website. There are going to be heaps of videos and YouTube videos to come. So be sure to request the ones that you like in the comment section. Um, and hopefully I can make some really great videos. So thanks again and see you soon.